Here. Ben Wynn. Andy Franklin. Closer to Andy. Andy Franklin. Andy Franklin. No, these mics are going to be the. Okay. Arn Cronwell. Present. Daniel Bailey's present. Uh, you may stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there a moment? Some moment. <laughs> I was waiting for you someone to actually make it. Well, you missed the agenda, right? Are you making a motion to approve the agenda, Ben? I am. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Does anybody, does anybody have any objections to approve the agenda? All right. The agenda is approved by unanimous consent. Moving on to section E, closed session. All right. I'll make a motion to convene into closed session. Pursuant to section 19.851F of Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of discussing a person law, personnel matter, which, if discussed in public, would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect on the reputation of any persons referred to in such discussion. In addition, pursuant to section 19.851C for the purpose of discussing compensation of a public employee and potential employment for another public employee position. Oh. Okay, there's a motion and a second to convene. I'm talking into the mic, but not pushing. Get closer. No, I just didn't push the button. There's a motion to convene into closed session pursuant to section 1985 1F. There's a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Karen Cronwell? Yes. Andrew Franklin? Yes. Ben Wynn? Yes. Carla Pennington Cross? Yes. Then Abigail votes yes. Uh, we will now move into the session. Is it going to be possible to get another power cord for? Yeah, like I think that out there. I'm just anticipating yeah, this being a long meeting. Or, like, or yeah. wait, there's one over there. I don't know how far. Oh, there's uh, also. Um, oh yeah, there's also in my office. Oh, here's one. Yeah, those are my hard Yeah, we're going to your office. session. One second, catch my breath. Oh, shit. Good luck, Chief CBD subject. I wanted to make sure our policy wasn't against CBD. Okay. Um, so we had a motion. Second, and then I have the motion. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay, so. Um, the last motion was recess for five minutes. Do I need a motion to resume? So if we're just going to resume, I'd like okay. to resume. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I suppose. So, uh, unanimous consent. We are back in open session uh, for potential action on any matters discussed in closed sections. Session. All right. So I have, I will make a motion. To accept the resignation of Lindsay Johnson, business manager, effective January 17, 2024, as discussed in closed session. I'll second that. There's a motion and a second to accept the resignation of Lindsay Johnson, effective January 17, 2024. Uh, all in favor, voice vote. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We are now moving on to a public comments portion. Uh, this is for non-agenda items. Um, we will, as always, have comments allowed on agenda items, and we also have built in a second public comments section at the end of our meeting. Um, I did not see anybody sign up for public comments on non-agenda items. Is anybody here, would anybody here like to speak on? No? Okay. Uh, so we, we'll, what is there any Zoom participation? Do we have? Okay. Okay. 
So we are moving on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda contains an approval of minutes for December's at 6th Cal and December 20th uh, regular board meeting. It also includes 2024-25 family calendar change, uh, which in public content is the addition of a day uh, ob observing Rosh Hashanah. Um, there is a motion and there is a second to approve the change to the 2024. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh, consent. 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 Ah, sorry. Okay. There's a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor, voice vote. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Consent agenda is approved. We are moving on to item 4A, which is open enrollment. So we can start with regular we can we can start with regular education seats. Um, so my recommendation, uh, according to the information in the executive summary, is to approve ten seats for K five for the twenty uh, four twenty five school. So any obviously questions discussion around? You, I'm sorry. Can you can you just speak up a little? Can you say it? Can you say it? Your recommended action. So it is recommended that the board approve um, the recommendation to declare 10 open enrollment seats for kindergarten and zero seats for grades one through eight for the 24 25 school year. So that's the regular end piece. Is there a motion? Uh, I'm going to move to uh, approve no open enrollment under either. Uh, special education or regular enrollment uh, for the 24 25 school year. Is there a second? Second. All right, so that now there will be discussion. You want to? So uh, I am a big proponent of utilizing open enrollment. I think that open enrollment is a very important tool. Uh, I have long advocated uh, for Nicolay to accept. Uh, I apologize. Uh, I've long advocated for Nicolay to accept uh, open enrollment to from Peter schools into Nicolay. Um, I believe at this point, without being able to understand uh, the financial impact uh, of allowing these students in, and uh, I, 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 I'm leery and I uh, I, I just don't feel comfortable approving open enrollment at this time. Uh, so while that might change, I also know that we have to make a decision this month, which is typical. Uh, but I, uh, I can't go forward with that today. So my recommendation is to uh, approve no open enrollment slots. Can I ask a question? When is the actual deadline for announcing seats? So the vote has to be has to be held in January. So just in January. January. It opens on February fifth. Okay. Um, and so, so I was just gonna say I can understand the, the thought around that based on past practice and how many students we add in kindergarten at the between now and August that we didn't account for. If we don't declare the ten, I don't think we're gonna be in a space. I think we're still going to be in a space where we need to have five sections of kindergarten if that's the thinking, but that that would make the difference. I don't think it'll make the difference. I think we'll still need five sections of kindergarten. Um, this is just an attempt to actually have more students in those five sections. Weren't we, didn't we have a problem with uh, kindergarten having too many kids in a class? Yeah, we had a bubble year two years ago. So pretty typically the pattern has been to approve around 10 students a year for kindergarten. We had a lot of kids post COVID that we didn't account for that weren't obviously in school. And so we had a bubble. Um, so yeah, we did have, have that situation, which is part of the reason that that buffer is left in there. So while we had five families indicate we're coming to K-5 and not K-4, it's still leaving a buffer for students that might show up in August that we don't know about. Okay. So so Allison, what were, what have been the annual trends? Like in the last five years, um, sorry, I didn't find it. So I just, you know, what is the typical? 
I'm just pulling up the document. And I'll, I'll yeah, it is in there. I didn't realize what it was. Wait, that's okay. So if I look at oh enrollment analysis by grade K K five. Um, so typically, um, if you go back to two thousand eleven, so the number of students we've declared eleven six seven eleven nine thirteen. So right in that range, the last three years, eleven eleven and fourteen. I'm sorry, that's OEN. I apologize. I was looking at the wrong thing. So that's the number of students we've had in for OE. Our average class size is around there as well. I apologize. I think my intended question earlier was what, how many kids have showed up that we didn't know were coming? So if you look, As residents, if you look at the prior year 4K um, column and then September, that would give you an idea. So we knew about all those kids in K-4 and then that shows, so I mean, it varied. The first year was 11. There were a couple pretty large jumps in 20, between 2014 and 2017 where we went from around 80 some kids to over 100 that showed up in September. And do we know that these revenues and expenses are accurate? The ones that are listed at the bottom. The bottom two rows. I, okay, so I just want to, you can answer that. I'm inclined to say that if we have 13 days to consider the budgetary impact of an open enrollment decision, and we plan to meet multiple times between now and the end of January, I'm inclined to not make this decision, not knowing our actual budget budgetary status and how this impacts us positively or negatively. If it's not, in fact, like, is there planning that happens after we make this decision or if we can just start accepting people? So, but we can't accept people until February it. anyway. So is there some urgent reason to make this call right now? I have always historically told parents, I will know the answer after tonight. So you can start calling me tomorrow. I will simply have a bunch of phone calls that I will say to call me on the um, first Friday, the first Monday. Would you guys like to move ahead with uh, special education? Since that recommendation is in a line? Well, I, I would just answer. rather wait on open enrollment, period. If we're going to wait on regular ed, I think we should have that discussion together if we're going to postpone this. Well, his mo the motion on the table right now is to approve zero seats. I don't have my motion order card. Yet. I, need I would accept the motion to table as friendly. You don't get to accept there are no it. Friendly amendments, There's no friendly amendment. But, but you could, could you amend the language so much that it was? <laughs> but I can make a motion to postpone, right? To table. Yeah, postpone to. Postpone to a future date. Oh, oh there it yeah, is. Postpone indefinitely will kill it. Right. I don't want to kill it. Back. Can I just make a. Oh, no, it's up. I, I mean, I don't know in terms of the order of procedures, uh, though we have to finish one before we go to the other. But I mean, I suppose it can take precedence. So if you want to make a motion, I mean, I'm not going to be the parliamentarian tonight. I think that we're probably willing to adjourn this slightly. So, right. So we would be making a motion, motion to a later date. Is that what it is? A motion to adjourn to a later date? Yeah. Oh, not adjourn, sorry. Post. Yeah, motion to the table to vote. It's not a table. We would vote clearly not to be able to move into a first postpone to a later date. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to postpone that motion and the discussion of it to a later date in January. Okay. It works. Okay. 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 So there's a motion to postpone the motion and discussion. There's a second. Sorry. And a second until a later date in January. Okay. So that means we will move on. Thanks for that. Do we need a vote or just no one? Oh my goodness gracious. Is anybody opposed? I'm so sorry. No. I'm not hearing any objections. So by unanimous consent, we will approve that motion to postpone to a later time in January. Sorry. All right. We are moving on to item 4B financials. This is a continued discussion of our budget for the special meetings that have been held already on January 9th and January 15th. 
So I did add an exact summary, but I'll just read it. Um, so our first step was to get an expert to assess the situation and de determine our current state, as you've heard, as we've made some decisions tonight to wait on some things until we have that additional information. Uh, we all recognize that the information that was presented to us by Baird was a worst case scenario and was based on numbers given to them by the business office, which gave us all the desire to push a little farther, bring in an expert and get some more accurate information. Uh, the board and I recruited Todd Gray to do this initial work of combing through last year's budget and this year's budget so that we have information that we know is accurate and that we can rely on in order to ensure the right next steps. Todd is a former superintendent and business manager who does this work with districts. He came highly recommended and has been working through our, through our information over the last several days. He was in the district this morning working with our district accountant and I've connected him with vital people to move us forward, like our auditors and our PMA um, contacts, so that we can get some information on cash flow. He will be continuing the work tonight and providing an update to myself and the board on Friday. Once his work is complete, we will have that accurate picture of our current finances in order to make informed decisions. The administrative team and support staff have been all hands on deck and I can't thank them enough, ensuring that all services and supports continue to be provided for staff and students. Other current work includes finding an interim business manager to work with the district and Todd through June 30th and the board and I have also begun that process. As we move forward with this year's budget and building the next, the administrative team will be looking for efficiencies with the goal to keep as much of this away from classrooms as possible. We know that our most valuable asset is our front facing staff working with students every day. And again, this work cannot be done well until we know exactly what where our budget stands. I will continue to communicate out to staff in a timely manner around all of these steps. I look forward to the insight we will gain from Todd around current status as we work to ensure our budget is in a good place moving forward. Okay. Um, there is public comment or visitor participation at this time that anyone comments, questions, suggestions, and then after that we'll move to any board discussion. I know I, I thought I saw, oh, she's, I was uh, Would anybody like to? I don't know. Okay. Can you um, state your name and association? Um, yep. uh, she have to sit on the stool. Thanks. Name and yeah, there were association. Yeah, D'Angelo McGuire, uh, 531 West Fairfield Court, Glendale, Good. second grade teacher at Parkwood School. Um, you can leave it on it, it'll just stay up. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's okay, we're all we're all a little awkward with that. Okay, so I understand from Ms. Weiss's statement that we have hired Todd Gray to go through last year and this year's budgets. Um, from when she has stated that an update will come this Friday, January nineteenth. Yep, so okay. Do you believe at that point he will have a number because I know from the January 9th recording um, that several numbers were thrown around, uh, 3.6 million being one of them, but then it was also stated that that is possibly not an accurate number. Do you believe by this Friday, January 19th, he will have an accurate number? It's likely not. Okay. What are you hoping for him to share by? This Friday. Um, I'm hoping that the audit, the last year's audit, is going to be closed because that's information he needs to help with this work. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I just want to make sure. I'm okay. hoping that last year's audit will be closed and that we'll have cash flow information so that we have some immediate information about this bu year's budget. Um, but so, I don't think they'll have his work completed by okay. Friday. Can I? Can I? Uh, I will add that. So the way I see Todd Gray's work, I see it as he's going to do a needs assessment for us on a high level. So that's going to include 
include three things. One is, oh, look at me. That's going to include three things. Uh, one is a forensic audit, which is backwards looking, right? How do we, how are we here? Um, the next thing is budget strategy. So once we know where we are, uh, what are some strategies moving forward to get us, you know, um, into a better place? And, uh, oh man, I'm spacing on the third one. There were three things you said we need. Oh. A day to day. Uh, yes, and then so so he's also working on helping us find somebody to help manage the day to day financials. So his job is to come in and assess the state the state of our financial department who we have working there, as well as um, make sense of the the budget and and numbers and and do that piece, and then tell us who else do we need to come in and maybe it's a deeper forensic audit, maybe it's something else like he's. He is a very, as everyone we talk to about him, he's very esteemed, he's well-respected, he's done this in many districts. He is, um, so, I, so I think um, that's how I see his role. It's a needs assessment for us. He's gonna, because he's done, he's been a business manager, superintendent, all these things, he's gonna tell us, this is what you need, these are your next steps. And thankfully, we have been affirmed in selecting him by saying like, you know, he is, was it the best first step we could have made? So he, that, that's how I see his role. Um, it may take a little bit of time to work out the numbers because that's a, a big job to, you know, to step into someone, to step into that role. And, and all that. So that's how I see it, if that helps at all. Yes, absolutely. Um, will we continue to pay Baird to work with him as well? So, so Baird works with us based on a tool we bought from them, a forecasting tool. Mm -hmm. And what they um, do right now is offer support through that tool. We explored, uh, we're currently exploring options for the day-to-day -day management. Those, he's going to work with everybody that's currently working with us, our PMA people, Baird, um, in the capacities that they're currently, that we're contracted and working with. I know so, when, I, oh, sorry. when I watched the June 9th, recording um there was a question about you said are we paying um, them oh well okay. yes sorry yes. okay so we were paying Baird a certain amount for just a, a short term or forecasting tool and then there was a question about will we be using them more right. in a deeper yes, way so going forward is Todd um our choice instead of Baird? Are we going to be using both? One of the things that will happen is when Todd has those actuals, then that information will go into that same tool that Baird used to give us an actual, accurate projection. So they'll be working together. They've worked together in the past. Okay. And they supplement each other. Mm -hmm. They're not one way to replace the other. Okay. And you said we're going to be looking for an interim business manager for the district. Um, any timeline on yes, as right. fast as we can, as fast as we can. Gotcha. Okay. It's a tight, it's a tight hiring market. There aren't a lot of business managers out there. Gotcha. So all hands on deck as we hunt. Okay. Thank there's you. A couple questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's Thanks a couple Andrew. questions online. I'm not sure how you want to get those. I'll do in person first. Okay. Okay. Look at that. Is there anybody else in person that would like to speak or ask a question or offer moral support? <laughs> nope. Okay, then we'll move to online. So are they writing or can they can we hear them? What's the Okay. Okay. I, I hope we've been clear about that, that yes, that the reason we aren't giving you specific reasons right now is because we don't know them. And I, I don't want to give false information. Um, I, I absolutely, clear communication and transparency are always our goals. This is the public's money, and this is the public's budget, and all of us on this board are members of the community. We are uh, mostly parents 
Um, <laughs> so we want to know, and we know everything uh, that we want to know so far. So we can only imagine uh, from the vantage point of the public. So I think that this board has been committed uh, to making sure that the findings are known. My answer. Okay. And I would add that I think having sat on the other side here and now having been on this side of the table for about a year and a half, I think what I didn't understand fully is that there, there, are, a couple, there are a couple things I didn't understand as the member of the public. First, there are laws that prevent us from discussing some things publicly. And so there are confidentiality laws. And we're, we're working very hard to be as transparent as we can about everything we're allowed to be transparent about. Um, and I know that's hard as, as a member of the public who doesn't have access to every last bit of information we have access to, but that's, that's what it is. Um, the second thing is that there's like this weird lag because of open, open meeting laws. So we can't just all gather whenever we think it would be efficient and effective as a board. We have to give 24 hours notice and then we can come together in public and we have to, we have, to have an agenda. So there is gonna be some lag built into the way this democracy is set up. And I know that's frustrating and it's frustrating for us too, but we have to do it that way and that's what ensures transparency as uh, Rob Cronwell knows is very important. So I, I would ask for patience and um, some grace as we work through all that and try to get you as much information as we can, as timely as we can. No, I think you have to say your, your name, your address, your affiliation. Jennifer Clark, a teacher and a resident. Uh, what about buildings and grounds and consideration for our community managing buildings and grounds since the city's goal is to be I'm on it at this point. <laughs> but that would be also in an interim position that would help support that. Thank you. We've also right. got Mike Carlson, who's amazing, who I met with yesterday, um, who's supporting that department. Is that it? Okay. Is there any other online or in person? All of them. Oh, okay. Great. Uh, no, uh, I think that's that. Um, there was just a suggestion that could questions please be repeated before answer? Oh, oh, we could make that. Good suggestion. Okay. 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 Was, was there something they missed? No, they want us to repeat now? Okay. Live. <laughs> I want to hear those, <laughs> the supportive comments. Oh, uh, the anonymous crowd. Just think. <laughs> I guess. Uh, okay. I'm kidding. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, one more. Oh, okay. Great. Sure. Bring it before I. Uh, the teacher big. Does the district break even on open enrollment students? So Lindsay, my neighbor and friend. Uh, I think that. I don't know the answer to that question off the top of my head, and that's actually, I would say, part and parcel of why we, well, does anyone know the answer off the top of their head? What was the question? Do I break even? Oh, repeat oh, the question. I, I can tell you. I, oh, I there we go. I somebody just repeat the question. The question was from Lindsay Trick, do we break even on open enrollment students? I can tell you how much we are given per, per okay. student. Hold on, let me log in real quick. For the 23-24 school year for a regular education student, we are reimbursed by the state $8,618 per student. For a special ed student that there isn't any extra things going back and forth between the districts, we are reimbursed $13,000. Four hundred and seventy dollars per student. So that's for the 23-24 school year. Um, the numbers were slightly smaller. Numbers were slightly smaller the year before, so the numbers do change on a yearly basis. Do we typically get more students in 
then leave? Currently, we've got 111 that are open enrolled in and out. We have 100. Oh. That, that number has gone up over the last couple of years with the open enrolled outs. Um, does that answer her question? Can we just, it would not answer her question. I don't have a microphone. <laughs> um, sorry. So to answer her question, we would need to know what our per pupil expenditure is for resident students. And I'm not sure if we have that number off the top of our head. So we would need to know, do we have it? No. Uh, well, it's, at, it's on the bottom of the spreadsheet, but I don't know how accurate those numbers are. It says yeah. open enrollment revenue and open enrollment expenses. Yeah, so it shows that. But I don't know how accurate that is. And it's very difficult to calculate the expense of, an, of a student. Okay. I think it was that was something that was a high cost student um, because you have to calculate. Kelly, do you know if the people online can hear what you just said? <laughs> it was it was really she's so good. cute. She's <laughs> Okay, so Ms. Trick, to answer your question, just kind of in summary, basically it's, um, we do not know what our per pupil resident cost is, and it is more complicated than simply crunching numbers and dividing by enrollment, because we would need to be able to understand what the underlying contributing factors and needs are of each individual kid. And so it's a little bit complicated apples to apples, but I do know other districts do somehow figure out kind of a, maybe a broader, and maybe we could figure out just kind of a broad, um, more generic per pupil expenditure. Um, and have that at our future meeting would, would be a goal, right? And then Kelly also added that it's almost a sure bet that special ed open enrollments, the state reimbursement is insufficient to cover the actual costs. Is that accurate, Kelly? Okay, she says yes, it is. <laughs> Are there any other online questions? Ms. McGuire? Sure. No, that's okay. We got you. Okay. Um, so you mentioned 111 open and enrolled students in the district. Is that this school year? Yes, that, that's, that's for the school year. Okay, and 100 of our Glendale students have chosen to leave the district and do open enrollment in another district. I'm curious um, what that number of students who have chosen to leave the district, what has that number looked like over the last few years? Um, not in here. So you got it? Mm -hmm. well, I, oh, I don't know. 
like one of three, not one of seven. One of seven. Uh, it, it it looks like and someone someone correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like it jumped uh, in 2020, 2021, which would be COVID. Yep. Yeah, last year it and was a, maintained that level. Last year it was 108. The year before it was 95. 2021 was also 95. Oh, yes, it's a thousand. 2019, it was 68. So that's where we took the job. Yeah, well, we used to be like, you know, in, in the 60s or so and up in the hundreds, COVID and after. Wondering, is it our goal to try to balance that out? If we have 100 students leaving the district, is it our goal to have an equal or greater number of students open enrolled, bringing them in? Is that a, is that a consideration? And if so, what's the reason? I mean, I just want to say historically, when we've considered open enrollment, we've considered open enrollment when we have it come up for us you know, at this time frame. And I think that while we don't, and, and frankly, with me being at two boards, I don't know that we've gone and looked at open enrollment out uh, from this way either. But it's, it's a good point, and it's a great way to understand the issue. Um, I think that we'd be much happier filling all the spots of, uh, at school with people who are residents because it's a little bit more straightforward. Um, and, you know, in addition, while over at Glendale, River Hill, we've tried to you know, have people come in and be part of the family and be invested and, you know, hopefully go out, a lot of people uh, are despondent that, you know, as soon as we open and roll, and you know, leave at the end of the eighth grade, not be part of that continuation, you know, to Nick Lay. So there's a lot of different you know factors that kind of fall in, you know, in into that greater question. Um, but at the end of the day, we tend to look squarely at this issue, and you know, this question about revenue and expenses is something that I've seen debated in a bunch of different ways because um, the real concern is whether or not new classes have to be created. Uh, and therefore, yeah. that's where you know those expenses come from. Mm -hmm. uh, that might make open enrollment a bad choice. Um, frankly, I, I think there are also some other less pleasant reasons why people don't welcome open enrollment into the community. Um, for what it's worth, I mean, my interest really is not in stopping open enrollment. My interest is making sure that we have accurate, uh, you know, or at least. You know, to the best of our abilities, you know, some of that information that we normally discuss that with our business manager uh, was not uh, in here uh, anymore. So that's why I sought to put the brakes on it for right now, just to buy some time. From a teacher standpoint, I just hope you are considering more than just the money when it comes to open enrollment, like Ms. Kelly. <laughs> Ms. Uh, White, Galecki White, Galecki White, um, yep. Um, so the 13,000 we're getting from the state to cover um, special ed students that are open enrollment is not sufficient. Um, we're feeling that in our buildings at Parkway. That's why I can only speak for Parkway. We're feeling that. We're, we're not feeling like we're getting the support for the students that we need. That's not a good feeling. Um, it's, it's creating a lot of stress, a lot of, yeah. We, I've shared that with you guys. Um, so, yeah, taking all of that into consideration as well, you know, the, the fact that the teachers need the support for the students that we're taking in, the proper support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other online or in person comments um, or questions? Just okay. She's nodding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why do we know what teacher board members? Okay. Do you want to ask if they will identify themselves? Do you want to say to make it clear that there's a reason they're not listening? So can you tell? Because okay, so it's our visitor participation policy. Let me pull it up. 
Okay. I'm usually just going to tell them to if you're, if you want to comment, maybe have to. Oh, she can just put it in. in. Yep. She can put it to her so they know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's just so it's clear. So it's, it's because our visitor participation policy uh, is directed at district residents, parents, staff members, uh, taxpayers uh, in the district. Um, did I say staff? Staff members. Um, and if you do not are not in any of those areas, I believe the the board can approve and have you speak, but it's supposed to be like requested in advance. That's that's my understanding of the policy. Is anybody else's understanding? Okay. Um, so that just is making sure they know like why. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I'm saying that. I guess if they want to uh, identify themselves, I'm happy to take their questions. If they're not comfortable, they can email. Uh, I will remind everybody that we remain here and available to talk and answer questions, not just in this meeting. Um, and so that that is always an option. Um, I will say this. I just want to add one thing about this. So I, I'm actually, this is a small, small group I was preparing myself for um, something more. And that would have been totally understandable and totally reasonable. And I fully understand the high emotions, the frustration, all of the, the range of fears um, that people are feeling because I think we can identify with those feelings. You saw it. You saw it in a recorded meeting uh, a week ago, right? Um, I want to say that 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 everyone is entitled to that, and I'm I'm here to listen to that. Um, I've gotten through that processing and those feelings, and I just want to make it clear that I have faith in this board. I have faith in this district. I know we are going to get to the other side of this. I I think that. Before you, we have a very cohesive, very collaborative, very transparent, you know, passionate, diligent board. And the reason that we are talking about this now, here, now, when it's not too late, is because of those things and, you know, not in spite of them. So I am open to all suggestions, all comments, all feedback. I, I will speak for myself, but I, I believe the the whole board is, and this is a collaborative affair at this point. It's, a, it's in everyone's best interest that we get through this. And I, I so I, I am feeling confident in our district and our abilities, and we've just got to get through this part. We've got to learn more and understand what's before us before we can give you specifics, a specific plan. Um, but it's all hands on deck. That's everybody. That's community. That's teachers. That's admin. I'm rambling. That's all I can think of to say at this moment. Right, right. No, please, please. Hi, Amy Lingard, um, Parkway teacher, as well as Association Building Rep. Let me get you want a chair. <laughs> no, it was okay. Fine. Okay. It was a little take, take um, I just wanted to express a lot of staff have come up to me as building rep and administrators as well. And I just want to publicly thank all of you for number one, tackling this. I know how shocking it was and I can't imagine how difficult this is for all of you to go through. Um, we appreciate the openness. We appreciate the great fast communication that we've gotten from board and administration. Um, we appreciate the administrators who are stepping up and taking on extra roles. And I don't know that everyone always gets thanked. So I'm just here to thank you publicly that a lot of people, yes, are scared, are, are worried, are disappointed and even hurt. Um, but I think if we all unite and work together, I think um, we can fight through this and <laughs> make progress eventually. I think it's gonna take time, but I just want, like you can probably hear the motion. Yeah. I, it, this isn't nervous, this, I'm emotional yeah. um, because it's heartbreaking. When you think that you're building and taking steps forward, and then you just get shot down. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Can I say? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I I know everyone knows about my anxiety attack because I announced it. Yeah, yeah. it was great, real classy moment, but it um, was right? perfect. <laughs> it was a legitimate, immediate reaction to really unexpected news, but I. 
What was not on camera is that by that night and the next day, we were all streaming past anxiety to problem solving. And I think that's, it's hard to convey that through visible action as a board, but I think every one of us individually and in pairs, because we can't gather in three without violating open meeting laws, <laughs> are working and learning and coming up this big learning curve. Um, so I, I really appreciate that positive feedback because I, for my part, I, I think I have leaped past the anxiety and we're on to problem solving. So I want everyone to feel confident about that. I've got a running joke in my head about what happens when you get three lawyers, an OT and a teacher on a school board. We all walk into a bar, right? But we're really awesome. We're an awesome board. We have a real powerful brain trust here and we're all really focused and we're all really persistent and passionate and I'm seeing it in action. We're aligned in our vision of doing what's right for kids. I think we're aligned in our, not self-doubt, but self-criticism as we're trying to improve and be more focused. And I think that's really important to self-growth and really important to model for our district and our kids that we're leaning in on the hard stuff and getting up the learning curve. Um, and I would say I also expected more people and I hope people keep showing up because we are a democracy, right? 10,000 democracies in America and we're only as strong as our community, which is, I think, right, what Danielle already said, but I, I believe in the power of your voices and the power of collaboration because the solution might not come out of our mouths. It might come out of a community member's mouth, something we haven't thought of. And so I would encourage people to keep showing up and keep challenging us. I don't think there's anyone on this board who's afraid of being challenged and poked and pushed to rethink um, how we're coming at this. Um, and I'm rambling too, but the last thing I wanted to say, I've been thinking about this a lot because in this noise, it can be easy to forget kind of the, the big picture for me. And so I'm just sort of telling myself again and again to come back to like a wise state of mind not going to come from emotion, and I'm not going to come from pure logic. I'm just trying to remember that compassion that drives us to love kids and to believe in our public schools. And I'm trying to model that as I work through problems. And I'm trying to keep that equity lens in mind, because as we try to address budget needs and we're looking at all these intersections of needs, I think it's important for us to all remember not to target any particular group to target any particular need, to blame, or to look for you know people to point our fingers at. We have to remember community and kind of that dream of giving every child what they need to succeed, right? That dream of equity, educational equity. So that's what I'm thinking about, and I'm happy to be poked about it. I will add to, we obviously want to communicate about this to the community. More uh, in oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Well, let me just say that. Let me just add this then. Um, the, the delay in doing that is sort of wanting to communicate more, wanting to know what we are dealing with, wanting to be able to give more facts than we're working on it right now. So I think it's important to be able to have some of that information, but and so that's just another piece. Okay, more online. Yep. And the answer is one of them. Those are the only two ones I said. So one of the comments was, um, do you plan to acknowledge the community with a statement, which uh, obviously Danielle just spoke oh. to. Um, we talked about the fact that we wanted to get something out to all families, um, but we wanted to start the work with Todd and then have this meeting tonight and then be able to share an update. So yes, we will be sharing regular updates with all caregivers. Um, the next one was, do you have any data surrounding OE students in Glendale River Hills who have gone OE at Nicolay versus those who have not? From what I understand, it's beyond open on the answer because I don't think that Nicolay has, has accepted seats in like three or four or five years a long time. Uh, so, well. So the first comment was that she doesn't believe that Nicolay has uh, declared seats. Nicolay did not. Uh, Nicolay did not, and uh, I don't think uh, that we have a recommendation right now to accept new uh, open enrollment students. I don't think that we've actually accepted Nicolay open enrollment students uh, for some period. 
Nicolay could theoretically, you know, adopt some kind of priority to allow open enrollment to some feeder schools uh, in, in certain priority, but I've actually had a lot of conversations and being in the vantage that I, point that I have, you know, it's very difficult for, frankly, for a high school uh, with feeder districts that are not part of the same district to be able to craft legitimate criteria for accepting students in from this feeder district. And that's been a challenge as well, because aside from whether or not it'd be nice to have everything go from K to 12, um, there it's it's not an easy way to set up open enrollment so that you can set up those priorities. Um, and I think that there's a question on that. So um, right now, if someone is uh, an open enrollee, they don't move into the district, by the time that uh, they enroll in the clay, they're not going to be a clay student. And it's something that we actually uh, have stressed uh, when we made the open enrollment calls because, uh, once again, I mean, there was a lot of uh, vocality about uh, trying to communicate that we really wanted to, to treat these people that we take into our district, you know, and, and to carry them through and to make sure that they have same path that all their peers do, so they are treated second class citizens. And you know, it's just it's it's not an easy thing to do outside of a district that is a consolidated K to twelve district. So that's why it plays to go ahead and done that. Okay, can we oh sorry. Uh, so going back to the original question, the first question about communication, I'm wondering if go ahead, sorry. <laughs> I'm wondering if there's um, a benefit to the statement that you made, Allison, being kind of cleaned up and shared as an email to the district or to the, you know, and just yeah. like, like, this is our first communication. This is where we're at. These are our first steps. I mean, yeah. it seems like a reasonable yeah. thing to say yeah. and share to the to the broad, broader community. Sure. Yeah. That's a good idea. Thanks for telling me I have to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's the end. I'm yeah. teasing. Yeah, it's yeah. a different than a it's different so mad. It's a safe teacher. <laughs> um, um, were there okay. more? Yep. Okay. Uh, so the next question was sorry, I didn't hear the question. Um, given the stats shared that we continue to see 100 kids leave the district over the last few years, have we taken any proactive steps to get on the get to the root cause on why our community is choosing to remove their students from our schools? So my instinct is to say and compare to other districts to see, are we really outliers? I'm not sure I would assume that we are, especially if we see that jump happen during COVID. Um, so before I would answer that question, I feel like I would want to understand where we sit. We're an outlier. Um, and, and, and maybe it's a good question to ask, even if we're not an outlier, if we have, if we are clear on what our goals are around open enrollment and you know we do have a mission vision and commitment so looking at it through that equity lens but I also feel like that's a conversation around open enrollment maybe unless you're tying it really to our, our budget and financial discussion right now I feel like it's a separate it mm -hmm. might be a, a better bigger conversation I know we've looked at it. sorry Kayla you probably have a more historical one of the things that we've started to look at is if there's a jump between elementary and middle school because that happens in a lot of districts where more families will all open and roll out to be from elementary to middle. Right. What I saw was that a lot of families left during COVID and a lot of them continued to stay outside of the district. So um, you know, you, you, we started all the way down in elementary mm -hmm. and then we have families, I see a, quite a few families who move into the district but continue in their home district. Um, like families that had had a student at Milwaukee, like maybe like the French version or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they move in, they want to continue with their students out. So I think sense. that's why some of the numbers have gone up because our kids who left during COVID, um, we have had a little trickle here and there, but a lot of them were young, got established in their schools and they're going to finish them up there. Yeah, my guess is it's a diverse uh, range of experiences and stories. I'm not sure there might be one cohesive narrative but I think if our goal is to, you know, continue improving our district and becoming a destination district in that way, then that's our goal. And then that's the conversation we're having as opposed to why are people choosing not, you know, why do, why do we want, 
Why do people want to come here? That's the story I want to talk about. I know it's some just in a previous district, sorry. In a previous district I was in, we were about 50% open enrollment. So we did some exit interviews with families. So it's something we could potentially think about if that's something we want to get more information on, just to ask, get that information about why they're leaving. Cause like you said, there's so many different reasons. Um, so that's an, an option. Are there any other online? No, anyone else? No. Okay. Mike, oh no, okay, good. Um, I wanna thank everybody for showing up, for asking questions and just remind you that we're all here outside of this meeting and available to talk and field questions, comments, suggestions. Um, we are gonna move on to item 4C, which is future meeting dates. It was proposed by Carla Pennington Cross, uh, Vice President, that we schedule additional board meetings um, over the next few weeks and as long as we need to, because as she mentioned, oh, sorry, before we discuss, but that's the proposal. So we would like to be able to discuss that here, perhaps uh, schedule some. So, Emma, a motion. Does it require a motion? How does that work? I don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm going to say that this is a, this is a consensus. Here. It. We talked about having multiple meetings within a week. Uh, well, I, I think a motion itself isn't necessary. I think that uh, I, I think that we know what's going to be on the agenda. We've had discussions about having regular meetings a couple of weeks. Um, I also know that in discussing, for example, you know, uh, Todd Great work that you know. We, we can't just necessarily have a, fit, a fit set schedule that says we're going to be here and we're going to be here because despite the best efforts, we don't know what information we're going to get. So we kind of have to get that information and be able to kind of plan it out. And I, I, I certainly think that we ought to be meeting regularly. I, I think we ought to be meeting weekly at least until, you know, we, we get a grip on what's going on. Uh, and if there's nothing to say, then there's nothing to say. And then, you know. Right. We just don't have the meeting, but yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's why I want to have two scheduled a week. We can cancel it if we don't need it. If we don't have a quorum. We can at least have a conversation with a, with whatever to show up. And if someone on this board talks with Todd Gray outside of the meeting, then there would be some time scheduled to share that out. Right. For example, we just put, oh, sorry. Can we just put Tuesday, Thursday for the next four weeks? Right, that, that's what I would propose, something like that, a fixed schedule. And then our community would have a idea of when they could poke in on Zoom and see if anything interesting is going on. Preferably six or seven. <laughs> PM? Yeah. Interestingly, uh, Greg Babar today mentioned that and they were holding like really, or the, your two board meetings. Oh, no, sorry, that's a yeah, meeting. school board meeting. You had one at four uh, o'clock and one at six o'clock. Correct. Right. And those times were like surveys well, by the community. If, well. if we do one virtually, yeah. Thank you. We could do one at four o'clock and one at six, or we could do them all at four. I, as long as they're virtual, I mean, I can do four. I think one should be in person and one could be virtual. Because I think this information doesn't translate across the screen. Like if we need to have things in front of us or like be having a Absolutely. real conversation. And that was sure. actually a constituent suggestion that we, I received yesterday. Uh, or today, thanks. Um, okay, what about Tuesday at 4 p.m. virtual and then Thursday, 6 p.m. in person? I, yeah, I am, that's, yeah, I'm not available at 6 p.m. on Thursdays. I'm sorry. That's okay. This is why we're... Five what if we flipped it? Yes. 4 o'clock on Thursday, 6 o'clock on Tuesday. Sure. Wait, say that again. 4 o'clock on Thursday... Six o'clock on Tuesday. So those four o'clock Nick late meetings at Thursdays. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 right. Like we, oh, right. Every we could have a quorum without you on Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like you I feel one. welcome. Uh, <laughs> well, but I mean, we have a meeting yeah. schedule. Let's and schedule, I, I'm sure let's schedule this Tuesday or the 23rd. Can we schedule the 23rd? What time would work for everybody? Was it Tuesday? Like, is it virtual or in person? Well, it depends on the time. There's a Glen Hills Caregiver Advisory Council on Tuesday at six. 
could we schedule ours for right before or like a little bit after? So if people are there for that, they could also come here. I can't go Tuesday or Thursday. Okay, I can well, virtual. Yeah, yeah, it'll yeah, probably be Tuesdays or Thursdays, but I mean, I think we have to work out the time. That's all. Should we doodle this? I hate doodles. I don't feel like. I will. We could do this okay. by doodle if people agree to give their absolute maximum availability. I mean it. <laughs> We're being chewed up. One of the hard <laughs> things to say. I think what's being hard true. about doodle sometimes it depends on if it's per person or something. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you have stuff right before and it's, you could do virtual, but it's. So you can't. Do you know what? That's the only my concern with the doodle. Oh, what, what if we do Wednesday? Yeah, that's the in-person one, so five or six, and then for... Well, Wednesday, we already have meetings. Well, but next Wednesday. But we don't have one next Wednesday. But we are going to need to meet sooner than that, probably, to talk about it. Probably need to meet Friday. That's yeah. what I was... Yeah, that was Friday. Yeah, that would right. that work? Friday, Wednesday? Friday? Friday, when? Well, that, that's the TBD. So how about Friday the 19th, which is day after tomorrow, because we have to regather. Exactly. You know, time. Friday at four. Oh, you can do that. that for, virtual. The virtual one be the intro be virtual. Friday at four. This one. If we're talking about interrupts. I mean, aren't you here already? So, we so I have a six of ten virtual seating. <laughs> like that's the only issue is it's an hour. Right? What? Well, so I can do or I or have a virtual meeting. Could you? Well, what worked? Tell me. Tell me I, virtual. I think virtual would make sense for these supplementary meetings. Not all of them, but this one. Uh, that's true. Okay. January nineteenth. 4 p.m. Zoom. Yes. And perhaps if Ted can join us, that would be for the interim conversation. We can ask Dr. Well, this is why I'm saying we should be posting it so that we can talk about budget and talk about we should. Right. I'm sorry. I thought posting. Friday was just about the interim. So I apologize. It's hard to say what Friday could be about because we're going to learn information every day. So I want to make sure that we have flexibility and capacity to talk about what we need to talk about as soon as we can. And this one will be virtual. Yes, virtual. And then how about 4, 4 p.m. January 19th. We've done it. We've successfully there scheduled go. one meeting. Let's schedule the next one on Friday. Let's keep, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you said January 24th. No, Friday the 19th. Right, and then, the four, and then Wednesday, right? Ben had suggested Wednesday the 24th. Um, I think I want to wait till Friday and see. see. We might have a better sense. Yeah, of when we need to meet again. When there's less on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. No, I know. I think that's. <laughs> I think that's a bit onerous for, for this tonight. moment right now. But so maybe Friday we could. Exactly. Okay. That month should be a possible agenda time. item of action. Okay. Does it have to be? <laughs> What? An agenda item of action? Discussion. Okay. <laughs> it was just policy. Discussion. Okay. Discussion. Okay. I just want to clarify. Okay. We need to we need to note that there might be potential action though. They can't just be noted for discussion if we think that there might no, be. No, they mean just this for Friday. Just if we're gonna discuss dates. But uh, we don't need a board action. Yeah. To schedule. So that means we have to post it by tomorrow at mm -hmm. Okay. We'll work on that. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, <clears throat> we are now moving on to item 4D. Can I just ask a oh, question? Oh, sure. Can that be open or closed? Um, it could be both, I would assume. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Again, because if we're dealing with some personnel things, we can't. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. 4D. Waiting. I move that we um, move into closed session to pursuant to section 19.851C, Wisconsin statute, for the purpose of considering employment and compensation for administrative contracts for the 24 25 school year. Second. Uh, there is a motion and a second to move into closed session pursuant to section 1995.1C. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote. Karen, well, Danielle Bailey votes aye. 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 Aye.
All right, we will move into closed session. I want to thank everyone for coming. If you want to stay, I can't say how long this will be. There is another time for public comments, and we'll be. Okay. Oh, I'll entertain a motion, right? I move to reconvene into open session. Second. All in favor, voice vote. Aye. 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 Okay. Welcome to open session. Thank you for staying, everybody. Um, if there is anybody online or in person that would like to make public comments on agenda items or non-agenda items. Uh, future agenda topics, anyone? Budget, budget, budget. Budget, 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 budget. It's already on the agenda. Um, okay. Please take this seriously, team. I'm moving on to meeting closing. A uh, little bit of a debrief. If anybody has comments about things they think we did well or things we could improve, I think that same. Uh, I'll, I'll go. I'll start. I, I I don't know actually. I think we did I think everybody is engaged and present and the amount of preparation that has gone into this meeting and the thoughtfulness I think is apparent. Um so I appreciate all of you guys and your various perspectives. Um I wish more people were here. I think that was a little bit of a this right. might have been a conflict of the day. I don't know. So, um, and I, I I added the second public comment section, but it was kind of in a weird space. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll think about that next time. Anyone else? The veteran, if you guys sign up, go. Oh, I'm going tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be there at some point. I don't know. I, I learned a lot today other. about Wisconsin school finances. That is where I will be tomorrow morning at 8 45. And also, when you go, please keep in mind that we will be doing a report out at a cow on something you attended to share out so we can all benefit. I just appreciate appreciate that everyone's leaning in. Yeah. yeah. We got this. Okay. Yep. Ben. Go on, Ben. I was saying something did well. Or, or you want to improve something you want to do, Ben? We. No, it's not your hopes and dreams. No, stop. No. Stop, stop it. it. We're taking it seriously today. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, could you, okay. Ben. You did a good job uh, discussing uh, the public comments today. I did. I did. Okay, well, I'm going to reflect on a variety of things, not just I said in the meeting. Ooh. As a new board member, this is astonishing. And to have had the leadership and the mentorship and the availability of my board members has been huge. So thank you for that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, also, uh, I want people to understand that these people at these tables are really doing their damnedest to make sure that we're making the right choices and we're moving forward. And there's a great deal of passion at this board and in this room. And I just so deeply appreciate it. So thank you. And we're getting better with the mic. We are. <laughs> Stop singing it. Yeah. By the time I'm off, I'll do really great. With it. Okay, okay. I have more of them. Um, okay. I actually oh. I want to say one thing and actually uh, name drop Ms. McGuire with among other teachers mm -hmm. and, and staff. Ms. Lingard. We start our board meetings with uh, our uh, district mission and values, and we used to uh, read and up with them. One of them right now isn't really relevant, which is that. Education is shared responsibility. We believe that, okay? Unfortunately, I don't have a sheet in front of me, so I can't uh, recite the whole thing, but it is shared responsibility. And I just want to thank everyone who's made a comment. Just go, oh, you have it. But those are our people. We believe that, uh, oh. hold on, education is a shared responsibility of the student, home, school, and community. I strongly believe that. Thank you very, very much. Um, and I want to thank everyone for keeping that in perspective because this is this is really about education. This is really about the success of public schools and public governance. And um, it's something to keep in mind. It's a burden, 
but honestly, I think it's also a reason and it's uplifting to know that we're doing this for a higher purpose. And, you know, as, as you and other people have said and acknowledged that we've gotten this positive feedback, um, and I deeply appreciate that because it's a very trying time for all of us. And uh, I just, I, I want to make sure that we keep that in mind that we are doing this and uh, we're all in this together. And uh, so thank you to Ms. Boyer again. All right, I will listen for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All in favor, voice vote. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Well, that was only three hours. Yeah, so even our. Yeah.